including, of course, shows such as Gossip Girl, Law and Order, Blue Bloods, etc. And movies such as Ghostbusters and The Day After Tomorrow, or as I like to call it, Wednesday. Get it? It's the day after tomorrow. Tomorrow's Tuesday. Oh, okay, cool. Well, ladies and gents, we are now approaching my personal favorite building in all of New York City. The one and only Empire State Building! The Empire State Building was constructed in 1931 and built at a miraculous rate, taking only 410 days to complete construction. The reason why the building went up so fast is because it was built throughout the Great Depression. And at this time, jobs were at a premium, so anybody who found themselves lucky enough working on the Empire State Building worked twice as hard, twice as long, and for uh, half the wrong one down on the fence somewhere. This one right here with the red. Now, starting that the building was built throughout the Great Depression, there was a lack of renters to occupy the building upon its construction, and thus it only remains naming the Empire State Building the Empty State Building. In response to this article, the owners of the building hired a crew whose sole purpose was to go to every single floor at night and flip the lights on and off just to give the building the appearance of being occupied when in fact it didn't become profitable for its owners until the 1950s. A little bit more about the Empire State Building. <sighs> the building sits on two acres at ground level, has 74 elevators, rises to 1,342 feet in the sky while boasting 102 floors, has 6,000 floors, 6,500 windows, and currently the gorilla population is zero. If you guys did not know, the Empire State Building is where King Kong lived for all of a minute and a half. They said that he had an amazing summer, but he had a horrible fall. Haha! -ha. Told you guys, the jokes are getting any better than that. It's a PG rated tour. To your right is the Marble Collegiate Church, home of the oldest Pentecostal congregation in the United States. States which traces its origins back to the 1690s. The church that you see here, however, was constructed in the 20th century. Now, uh, one of the most famous, or infamous, I should say, patrons of this church was none other than Mr. Watergate himself, Richard Nixon, who attended this church throughout the time that he uh, spent in New York after resigning as President of the United States. Garden. This is how Madison Square Garden gets its name, folks. The first one was constructed in the 1840s, and the second one constructed back in the 1880s. So, directly ahead of us lies the building that holds the distinct moniker as being known as New York City's very first skyscraper. This, ladies and gents, is the Flatiron Building. Constructed back in 1903, it stood until 1908 as the world's tallest building. Originis, Lord & Taylors, Macy's, they were all located in this portion of Fifth Avenue. However, Denny's Mound doesn't get its name from the shopping district that was found here, but rather from the fact that this was one of the only places in New York City throughout this time period that ladies were pregnant like a billion times already. And then Chloe's in the background like... <laughs> what, you can't tell me that Chloe Kardashian doesn't look like a shaven too large in total? Oops, sorry. Now this brand new $200 million building that you see here to your left was an extension of the Parsons New School of Media and Design. 
the new school is actually a very misleading name for the school, citing that it was new when it opened up back in 1929. It's more like the old new school. Designed by Stanford White, the gentleman who designed the second Madison Square Garden. He actually designed this arch to commemorate the in 1889. Of course, if you guys did not know, our nation's first president was inaugurated on Wall Street back in April of 1789, a hundred years before. Hence, 100th anniversary commemorative design. Get it? Okay, cool. Next of the movie when the zombies are actually invading his home. He actually lived in the first townhouse that we're going to be seeing at the end of this street here. Now, these townhouses were constructed back in the 1870s and are some of the most expensive townhouses to be found in the country. This street right here to your left is known as Millionaire's Row, or The Row. These townhouses, ladies and gentlemen, are valued at $25 million. I know, I know, chump change. Flags with NYU on it. These are buildings that are owned, of course, by New York University, the largest private university in the United States. They actually own 70% of the buildings in this area. And the reason why they can afford to have so much butter along the Manhattan bread is because they charge over six is used as a trading route between the Dutch colony known as New Amsterdam, which preceded New York City, and the Native American groups that were found here in that time. Hither they did, because NoHo has seen the likes of many celebrities living here throughout the years, including, of course, Tom Cruise, who held Katie Holmes hostage not too far from where we're at right now, as well as, of course, one of my personal favorite celebrities of all time, the one and only, the beautiful, the legendary, the multi-talented, and timeless, Cher. All, right. All he had to do was simply strip out the outer portion of the building, piece by piece, or the face of the building, if you will. Send those pieces back to the catalog. I'm sorry. <laughs> Send those pieces back to the catalog. However, today, they're actually condominium lofts. And this neighborhood ranks second in most expensive neighborhoods in New York City to live. The average price of a condominium loft here in Soho is $17 million. So here we are now, ladies and gents, in the neighborhood known as Chinatown. Check it out, look, a Chinese McDonald's. Yeah, weird thing about the McDonald's, there's a pet store right across the street from it that's always open but always empty. I don't know what to do with that. Now, Chinatown is actually the largest enclave of Chinese people outside of the nation of China, meaning that this is the world's biggest Chinatown. And believe it or not, we actually have the second largest Chinatown uh, here in New York City as well. That one, however, is located in Flushing, Queens. But it is projected that by 2020, that Chinatown would actually be larger than this Chinatown. So they're gonna be trading in places. Now Chinatown, as you guys can see, is a great place to pick up great deals on everything from purses to perfumes. Little New York City insider on one of these purses just to have tears come down your face when you go home and the V falls off of your Louis Vuitton bag. I do, however, and this goes for the gentleman as well, recommend the purchasing of the fragrances found here. Now, there are many, many lovely fragrances that can be located in Chinatown for great deals akin to one-third or one-fifth of what you would pay for at, say, Macy's or Bloomingdale's. So instead of going to Macy's and purchasing an $80 bottle of a disgusting Donald Trump fragrance, you can come down here in Chinatown and purchase a $10 bottle of a wonderful Katy Perry, Katy Perry fragrance. I'm sorry, do, do we have any Donald Trump supporters on board? Stretch is about five blocks, uh, five blocks north of where we're at right now. Literally, of course, is the home of the nation's oldest pizzeria with Lombardi's, which was founded by Gennaro Lombardi back in 1891. Have you guys tried brick oven pizza yet? Have you, you guys haven't tried brick oven pizza?